Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 23rd of February, now it's almost 12 o'clock, middle of the day, by Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my channel in which I share latest updates on the news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. There is plenty of quite significant developments and news that I like to share with you for this moment, but before I start, let me once again say thank to all of you for your time, attention and support. It does mean a lot to me, so thank you very much. Now let's talk about news, and uh, this time I will start with uh, Moldova, former Soviet uh, Republic. And the reason is that uh, according to statement from Russian Defense Ministry, Zelensky's regime is, uh, and this is TASS news agencies reporting, so according to a statement from Russian Defense Ministry, Zelensky's regime uh, is planning to conduct some provocation on the border between uh, Transnistria and uh, Ukraine. And Trans Transnistria is a separatist republic. Here, this is Transnistria. And uh, after collapse of Soviet Union, Transnistria declared independence. It was part of Moldova. But uh, then they declare independence, and for uh, many decades now, uh, Trans Transnistria is an uh, unrecognized republic. Uh, so, according to Russian Defense Ministry, uh, some Ukrainian units will dress up as a, as a Russian military personnel, and they will simulate attack on uh, Ukraine, Ukrainian direction. And after this, uh, Ukrainian armed forces will start uh, their offensive in direction of uh, Transnistria. And this plan, as I understand, and uh, that's what uh, Defense Ministry is also articulating, this plan is uh, uh, will be conducted together with uh, Moldova's uh, top officials so moldovian government will knew what is uh, happening and they will give or maybe they already did give uh, permission to zelensky's regime to conduct this kind of provocation so uh, so ukrainian forces will conduct offensive uh, to establish control over the maybe not entire transnistria but uh, at least on the north sides because uh, uh, there are some uh, huge stockpiles of ammunition there from the uh, Soviet era. And as you know, Ukraine uh, now has some uh, issues with the um, supply of ammunition. And according to some military experts, in Transnistria, these uh, stockpiles are so huge that Ukraine may use it uh, for uh, years to come. And uh, yes, what 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 can I say about this uh, possible development? Mm, if Ukraine will truly conduct this kind of operation, first of all, you know, I should notice uh, parallels between this kind of operation and what Nazi Germany did before they attacked Poland. German units also dressed as a Polish soldiers to attack to attack uh, to one of the border posts of Germany and that was uh, used by Nazi Germany as an excuse to attack Poland if I remember correctly and uh, Zelensky's Nazi regime is using at least planning to use exactly the same tactic here uh, not surprising really what you're gonna expect from Nazis man so Moscow will be in, will find itself in quite difficult situation if uh, Ukraine will truly conduct this kind of operation because Transnistria is a landlocked for Russia, is a landlocked uh, region, and the only way to uh, assist Transnistria in this uh, kind of scenario is to uh, for Russia is to send its troops in this direction this is part of ukraine by the way so russia may be forced to conduct um, amphibious assault in uh, odessa region basically 
to then uh, establish uh, some land bridge uh, towards Transnistria. Russian forces may even enter Moldova if Moldovian forces will uh, conduct offensive in the direction of Transnistria. So, you know, as you know, there was many talks about Second Front that uh, Western world did want it to open against Russia. They did try and they are trying right now to destabilize Georgia to make some... Uh, and Georgia is here, by the way. That's Georgia here. And they are trying to destabilize Georgia for, for, for long now to make... to provoke some regime change and uh, establish in a government uh, associates of uh, war criminal Saakashvili to, you know, and after that, uh, basically, West probably wants to uh, reignite fight in uh, South Ossetia and Abkhazia, which are recognized by Russia as uh, independent uh, states, but uh, during Soviet Union, those republics were part of Georgia. And basically, they, you know, West was pushing hard to open Second Front using Georgia, but Georgian government, current Georgian government, is doing a good job to keep Georgia safe and Georgian society. But Moldovian government and president of Moldova, Sandu, is a quite stupid uh, bitch, really. I mean, she should be, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know how, how these kind of stupid uh, individuals end up in being presidents and prime ministers of states, but that bitch is fully controlled, fully controlled by West. And I'm quite sure she will uh, participate in this kind of provocation from Ukraine. And if Moldovian forces will attack Transnistria, I'm quite sure Moscow will uh, retaliate with heavy hand, with heavy hand. And uh, yes, eventually, uh, current Moldovian government will probably will be forced to flee Moldova. That's how this is going to end for them. Uh, when it comes to Ukraine itself, uh, as I said, uh, if they conduct this kind of uh, provocation and if they assault Transnistria, Moscow will be forced to send its amph amphibious forces in this direction and uh, establish some uh, land bridge to Transnistria to repeal Ukrainian offensive. But at the same time, we may see large-scale Moscow's offensive in the direction of um, Kiev too. As you know, Russia has quite large uh, forces in Belarus, stationed now in Belarus, and also in uh, uh, Russian regions that are bordering Ukraine. So we may see large-scale uh, offensive uh, operation in direction of uh, Kharkov, Sumy, Kiev, Chernigov, and Kiev. Um, so so, yes, I mean, some some uh, huge developments are ahead of us, uh, or it seems like so. Who knows, man? Let's see. Because I don't see how Moscow can uh, abandon the Transnistria. I mean, there are some few thousand Russian soldiers there as peacekeepers. And Transnistria also has uh, its own forces, its own military. But, uh, of course, few thousand uh, soldiers are not enough to repeal large-scale offensive <coughs> from uh, Ukraine and Moldova. So Moscow will be forced to act. And uh, I would not be surprised if Moscow will even use uh, tactical nuclear weapons. That's how uh, serious this uh, situation is. Because if Moscow loses Transnistria, uh, that will be received in Russia with heavy heart and many, many people in Russia will start to ask questions about abilities of Putin and his government to truly protect Russia because uh, society even now are not really understands why this conflict is uh, continuing you know, in Ukraine, continuing so long when uh, Russian propaganda year after year since Putin is president was, you know, saying to public that, you know, Russian army is so great and Russian army is so powerful and so many new equipment is going to Russian army and, you know, uh, many people are surprised 
to see that this conflict is continuing so long. And yes, Putin's uh, approval rating is quite high, but still, man, still questions are asked already. And if if uh, Russia will uh, lose Transnistria too, uh, then uh, then we may see some uh, change of heart in Russian society. Truly, so Moscow will will be forced to act. Moscow will be forced to. Acting, I'm afraid, the uh, situation may become so critical that Russia may even uh, conduct nuclear strike uh, against uh, large formations of uh, Ukraine and maybe even Moldova. I would not be surprised at all if this kind of stuff is happened. And as I said, uh, in, you know, Moscow may start. Uh, large-scale offensive operation in many directions, including Kyiv. So situation is truly, truly uh, escalating. And uh, if Kyiv did not change its mind and if Kyiv will conduct such a provocation, we may see some uh, very serious developments uh, on the front. And that's been said, let's continue now, let's continue, and this is TAS News Agency also, which is reporting that which is reporting that uh, Russian SU-24 um, bomber uh, crashed in Belgorod region, uh, according to information, and is, there is some... Uh, Different information. You know, some news agencies are reporting that SU-25 attack plane was crashed. Some are reporting that SU-24 bomber was crashed. Uh, and uh, we had information that pilot was uh, uh, pilot managed to successfully catapult himself from a plane. And uh, if we're talking about SU-24, uh, there is two pilots in these planes. So uh, then pil pilots successfully managed to catapult. But if we were talking about S-25, uh, majority of these uh, attack planes are one-seat planes. So in that sense, uh, this information that pilot uh, managed to successfully managed to catapult himself makes some sense. So as you this is a uh, breaking news just, just now uh, coming information and that's why Different news outlets are uh, providing different information. Even here, you can see that uh, uh, this is Commerzat newspaper, which is writing according to TAS that pilot has pilot, I mean single pilot, has managed to catapult himself. But uh, on uh, TAS itself, we are seeing that SU-24 was catapulted. Maybe. Uh, journalists who write this information don't really know that there is two pilots in uh, SU-24. Uh, there is no single seat to SU-24 exists. So, if only one pilot may manage to successfully cut up that, and if uh, SU-24 crashed, that means that one pilot did not manage to catapult himself successfully. But if it's uh, SU-24 and 25 attack plane. Then yeah, we are talking about single seat player plane, because majority are single seat planes. Even though some SU 25s are two seat tandem uh, seat planes, but those are used basically to for train purposes mainly. So let's continue. Uh, there is no information what caused this crash. Um, you know, I can imagine that plane was damaged. Uh, over the Ukraine and uh, did not manage to land to return to the base, but uh, no official information about reasons of this uh, incident. Let's continue. This is Ria Novosti is reporting that uh, according to officials of uh, LPR, Ukraine 
Ukraine now sending uh, to the front. Let me translate this for you. So, Ministry of Defense of Ukraine decided to send uh, employees of the military registration and uh, enlistment officer, offices to the front. So, in four regions, that's a karma, man. That's karma. In four regions, and I will tell you those regions. In Chernigov region, Dnipropetrovsk region, Sumsky, Sumy region. and uh, Rowan's Rowan region uh, 120 employees of this um, we call it in Russian um, commissariat uh, in English it must be military registration and enlistment offices these these are people that was uh, running hunting ordinary Ukrainians to send them to the front Probably you are seeing many videos, you did see many videos about this, how they are uh, catching people on the streets, on uh, shopping malls, just everywhere, to send to the front. And now these uh, animals will be sent to the front also, 120 from each region. And that's good, you know, they will probably receive, uh, they be, will be received with open hands, yes, <laughs> on the front line. Open hands, I mean, you know, many of them may may uh, find this in very strange circumstances on the front line, because they they send to to their deaths hundreds and thousands of people, man, hundreds and thousands of people. And this is our war criminals, you know, so they should, they, you know, they will, they will learn now what they really are. So let's continue, let's continue. This is TAS News Agency and uh, we have information from DPR, uh, Donetsk People's Republic, that um, around 200 uh, Ukrainian PMWs, POWs uh, are now uh, asking Russian side to join Russian forces to fight against Nazi regime. And this is, uh, to be honest, you know, this is great news. This is great news, and you know, I do hope that. Uh, Ukrainian units that are still fighting for uh, Zelensky's Nazi regime will uh, will realize that they've been used. They've been used uh, for Western interests, really. And I hope uh, Ukrainian forces will at least lay down arms and surrender, or it will be even better if they take matters in their hands and uh, do some. Uh, uh, regime change in Ukraine to take out Zelensky and all those uh, criminals and mass murderers that are running Ukraine for uh, you know since 2014. I did not lose belief in Ukrainian society, so it will be great if Ukrainians themselves will take out those Nazi animals that are running Ukraine and destroying Ukraine from within. So this is great news, really, but not enough, of course, not enough, you know. I expect big Ukrainian formations to take matters in their hands and to start fighting against neo-Nazis, against Ukrainian neo-Nazis. Let's continue. Let's continue. This is RBK News Agency is reporting that According to Wall Street uh, Journal, according to Wall Street Journal, White House Biden's uh, administration had received uh, intelligence about um, Chinese plans to supply Russia with uh, little weapons, 
with the little weapons and uh, some of those intelligence uh, information may be published even but um, according to this information at least uh, it's not uh, it's not exactly uh, known to for for us intelligence that Beijing did uh, finally make decision. So Beijing is still thinking what to do in this situation. And um, yes, I mean time will time will tell. But at least uh, uh, at least uh, uh, you know U.S. intelligence is hoping that. Um, giving briefing brief to white house to biden they will somehow manage to influence china so that uh, chinese uh, leadership will refuse to supply russia with them. defensive weapons what the hell man so yes i mean Yet again, even though I am quite critical, to be honest, about the relationship between Russia and China, uh, I don't see that China is... Uh, I don't think China is truly help, uh, friendly with, with, with us. Let's, be, let's say this way. And China is probably quite happy to see what, what is going on right now because Russia is... Uh, losing its strength uh, in this fight west is losing its strength in this fight so china for china this is win-win situation and longer this conflict in ukraine will continue you know better for china isn't it and uh, and i don't think china will do anything to help moscow to uh, finish this conflict in a short time no man they are you know watching uh, all of this and they can say on diplomatic level that you know we are all for peace and uh, let's have s some you know peace negotiations and stuff but that's politics man but when it comes to practical uh, terms then beijing is of course probably hoping that this conflict will continue for for years because as I said, man, West and Russia are uh, basically uh, spending on this conflict uh, unimaginable resources, including lives. And China probably are happy about it, you know. I don't know. I don't know. Because if Chinese want to help Russia, they will did it long time ago because it was obvious from very beginning that for example russian armed forces did lack uh, drones isn't it iran did help man one way or another yes tehran is denied they they supply russia with drones but iran did help maybe they share technology or you know and I do see Iran as a friendly state to Russia, but China, no man, Chinese did not see, did not do anything really. They may send some, you know, some kit uh, for soldiers, and uh, and that's questionable too because I mean, come on, man. And now if China is like considering to. Uh, supply Russia with uh, offensive weapons that's probably only because they may think that uh, um, Russia may be forced to some kind of uh, peace negotiations and this conflict may end and if China will deliver some uh, new capabilities to Russian armed forces then this conflict will continue and that's what Chinese really want I mean Chinese government, no, 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 of course. I'm always talking about elites and governments. I mean, I, I never talk about ordinary people. 
because ordinary people we are we all are on one side and those elites are our enemies everywhere basically so yes let's see how it will go man but um, lately i have more and more doubts that china is uh, truly friendly towards us man i never trust china chinese government of course never but uh, lately i have more and more reasons to be skeptical about uh, beijing's attentions so let's continue let's continue we have uh, Washington Post. This is Ria Novosti's reporting about article that was uh, written on, uh, published on Washington Post, according to which West uh, did fail to truly isolate Russia. And uh, yes, I mean, I can agree with this uh, statement. West truly failed to isolate Russia. And um, this task was. Um, you know, from the very beginning was uh, doomed to fail. Uh, because just look at the map, man. Just look at the map. Let me show it, you know. Look at this, man. That's Russia. How are you going to isolate this country, which is bordering almost with half of the world man not half of the world but you know how are you gonna isolate this this huge country man when russia has better reputation that for example us or europe does in latin america in africa in middle east in asia let's be honest man russia does have much better reputation that uh, west does because Russia never colonized no country in, in, in Latin America or in Africa or in, in Asia. We just never did that. And at least for this, Russia is did not perceived as an enemy in many countries in the world. Exactly the opposite. Russia received as a partner and a friend. Maybe even possibly even strategic partner. And I just talk about um, China, for example. And to be honest, because uh, I mean, I, I did mention a few times you know, in previous videos that if you ask me like five, seven years ago, uh, with who Russia should uh, build uh, true partnerships, I mean, strategic partnership with West or with China, I will say with West, if it's possible, with West. But, um, I mean, not, I mean, not, not seven, eight years ago, but maybe a little longer, if you ask me then, I will say this because, uh, you know, I have, my, I had my reason for this. But now, I mean, previous years just show that, uh, you cannot have a truly, uh, you know, good relationships with the Western states because they, they never take anyone as equal. And they want to dominate. Isn't it? I mean, that's simple, true. And if they cannot dominate, they will try to destroy you. And that's why right now, of course, I prefer to build strategic relationships with China, with India, with Iran, with the... Uh, African nations with Latin America, of course, you know, because Western elites cannot be trusted. I mean, not, not even for a second. And that's why um, it's quite, uh, it's quite uh, annoying, let me say this way, that Beijing is acting like, you know, I, strangely, let me say, yes, on an official level, there are some talks about friendship between Russia and China and so on. But in reality, Beijing did nothing to help Russia in real terms. Yes, they are sales, selling some equipment, maybe, um, you know, for, uh, let's say, non-little equipment. But this is, I mean, come on, man, they are making money for this. 
And yes, Chinese companies may be the uh, end to Russian market and after Western companies left. And Ch Ch Chinese companies may do provide with uh, some technology and some equipment in uh, civilian terms, absolutely. But yet again, they are making money, man. That's just business. If Chinese will uh, don't use this opportunity to establish themselves on Russian market after Western companies left, Indian companies will do this. And, and there is many other companies in the world that will happily take uh, peace in Russian market. So this is just a business, man. But when it comes to real partnership and help, I did not see that China did anything to help Russia. Anything. And it's obvious that Russia is now in a war with the entire West. Isn't it? With the exception of a few countries like Hungary, for example which is, you know, part of Eastern Europe and Eastern Europe, I don't really see Eastern Europe as a true part of the West. West is uh, Germany, France, Italy, UK, USA, and, you know, and little countries in Europe like Belgium, Netherlands and stuff, but Central and uh, Eastern Europe I did not see uh, as that they 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 they've been true part of West man. That you know, Western elites don't really take them as equal. And uh, I don't I don't I don't see Greece, for example, as part of the West. And you know, I feel sorry that uh, relationship between Russia and Greece is so bad now, man. I mean, they are Orthodox Christians, like we are. Most of us, not all of us, of course, but most of us. And then how they can could portray us? I mean, just how? But you know. Anyway, anyway. So yes, I can agree with this uh, article in the Washington Post that West failed to isolate Russia because Russia is too important for the rest of the world. That you know, Western elites think. So let's continue. Let's continue with the news and the um, RBK news agency is reporting that there's something different, man. You know, after all, uh, I love to see times when uh, most of the news will be about some scientific research and some some good stuff man not 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 the wars and destruction man like it is now and here we have information that Roscosmos will uh, conduct mission to moon this year uh, on the 13th of uh, June So, you know, a lunar uh, probe, a zone, uh, Luna 25, will be launched if everything goes uh, as planned. So, yes, this will be, I mean, this is a big deal because, uh, after all, Soviet Union was a pioneer in, a, uh, in a space research. And uh, sadly... Russia don't really have uh, that much success as the Soviet Union did at the time. So I, I did love this information. I mean, I hope everything will go according to plan and Russia will uh, return in big space uh, explorations. So, yes, I will wait for 13th of uh, June of 2023 and I will watch live launch of uh, Russian lunar program, let's say this way. And let's continue, and this is Ria is reporting that um, there was huge uh, earthquake in Tajikistan with 7.3 magnitude, which is, I mean, huge, really. And I just have a question, I mean, what is happening, man? Why, why, why so many earthquakes are lately you know in, in so many parts of the world particularly in the 
uh, we call it Middle Asia, but you know, Middle Asia, Middle East, you know, what is happening on the ground that um, so many earthquakes, man, almost on daily basis we are seeing information that there is earthquake there, earthquake there, just a few days ago, strong earthquakes yet again occur in uh, Turkey and Syria, which is, you know, So yes, very strange, very strange. Uh, we don't have information about uh, casualties in Tajikistan. I hope there, there, there is no casualties. But um, it will be good if, uh, if scientists will somehow try and explain if they know what causes so many earthquakes. I mean, what, what the hell is happening on the ground? No. And this is going to be last news for today, for this uh, update at least. This is Ria Novosti reporting that uh, inflation is slowing down in Russia and um, now it's uh, 11.36. which is uh, less than, I mean, in previous, uh, previous data was 11.61, so a little bit, yes, inflation is slowing down, but yet again, man, prices are high, man, and prices are going up almost on daily basis, man. I should say that because I, I, I noticed this, man, you know. We ordinary humans, man, you know, when we go to grocery store and, you know, It's hard to don't notice, man. The prices are going up uh, on some products. I mean, uh, what 11%, man? On some products, like 20, 30%. So, yes, I mean, as I said, man, uh, because the Russian ruble is, has been weakened by artificial in, you know, involvement of Russian Central Bank and the Finance Ministry. And I did predict that inflation will go up and I don't trust this information here. If they are saying that inflation is 11.36, you know, I don't trust them. Because I see with my own eyes what is happening with prices and, uh, you know, but you know, you know how these numbers are made, isn't it? They will keep price for bread, for example, as low as possible on certain products. They will keep price as low as possible, and because prices of uh, on some products are still low or don't even change, when other products are increasing in price, middle price, and that's how they are conducting research you know if you take a middle price then you you will see always low number because um, you know come on man these these products did rise but here look at it man you can still buy bread for uh, 29 rubles for example that's bread i buy because it's uh, you know it's not too expensive and it's you know that's bread I, uh, we buy you know it, it costs in different price, price in different uh, stores, but 25, 30, 35 around this. Which is, I mean, if you take in dollars, it's around the one dollar. For example, and bread prices, yes, are low, but many other prices. Yesterday, for example, I went to closest uh, store here and tomatoes, man, previous, like a few days ago were... So 95 rubles and yesterday were 145 for a kilogram. So 95 and 145, I mean, it's a huge difference, isn't it? I was truly surprised, you know, what, what the hell, man. But bread still, you know, yes, 29. And uh, then when they are conducting their research, they are coming with these kind of numbers, you know, 11.36, but it's not true, man. It's not true. Inflation is much higher. 
So yeah, it is what it is, man. And the inflation will go even higher because I'm quite sure Central Bank and the uh, Ministry of Finances will uh, intervene even more to weaken Russian ruble. And we will see Russian ruble will reach uh, 80 or 90 or 100 or 120 rubles for uh, $1 exchange rate. And of course, this will even more influence on the inflation. It's just obvious, man. You don't have to be like expert in, in finances to understand these basics, man. So this is it, man. This is it. I hope you find uh, I hope you find my video interesting, and uh, if so, please please uh, hit that like button. Leave some commentary about any topic you like. Uh, more likes and comments, my videos will have more chances are that YouTube algorithm will didn't suppress them too much. And uh, you know, I do try to react on all all comments that I see, and if i can't then you know uh, i will say that i'm very thankful for for your time your comments your likes i mean for your attention and support guys thank you very much and yes if you can support my channel you can use uh, with donations you can use uh, paypal and uh, patreon you will see links in the description so Yes, this is it for this update. Thank you very much. I hope the uh, program was interesting to you. So yes, have a nice day and take care.